Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the Advanced 3D Render series and in this video we are going to implement materials in our system. So if you remember in the previous video what we did was we basically implemented a method for having the uh, basic stuff in the scene like uh, some lighting and some specular and some diffuse components and it looked all pretty good but currently everything is pretty similar and we don't really have a material system to change the properties uh, like we want to. So we want to create a material system that can be handled by uniforms in our uh, shader system that we have got here so we are going to do that in this video so if I open up my fragment shader inside of Visual Studio Code here you can see that we only have a single uniform for the actual material properties which is just the light color uh, not the light color actually the object color and that influences all of these components and we can't really change those and also uh, this coefficient that we raise this to it's also um, like hard coded in here and cannot be controlled so what we'll do is we'll uh, replace this with a material now for the material we'll use a structure and structures uh, structs inside of GLSL are pretty similar to uh, their C counterparts what we can do is we can go ahead and say a uniform struct and uh, we'll basically just define it directly here and uh, for example if we if we can create a struct directly like this and we can put an element for example an integer x here and we can call that r and we can set the properties by saying r dot x in when we are setting it inside of our c++ code so let's replace this with some actual example i'm going to remove the color here and create a uniform struct and we are going to call this material now for the properties it will first of all have a diffuse component and uh, this diffuse will be actually be responsible for the uh, ambient color as well because they are basically should be the same the diffuse and ambient and we are going to have another for the specular which is a shininess color and uh, also a float called shininess which actually represents how shiny an object is so what we'll do is we'll go here and replace what we are raising the power to with material dot shininess and uh, we'll multiply this by material dot diffuse but we won't multiply the specular but instead only the ambient and diffuse component and then we'll multiply specular separately with material dot specular and add that to the total calculation and then we'll set our fragment color to be that and uh, yeah that's that's pretty awesome we have got our uh, like this mm, what we needed to do on side uh, on our fragment side that's that's pretty much done here so now we need to implement this kind of stuff on our uh, C++ code as well and uh, for example let's just implement it inside of here because our material is going to be a quick structure so we can just implement it inside of our object so we'll create a structure which we'll call uh, material uh, like that and uh, it will basically have the same properties as we had in the uh, you know fragment uh, shader here which is a vector 3 diffuse a vector 3 specular and a float shininess so a glm vec 3 of course we'll have to say like glm vec 3 uh, the first one is going to be diffuse so we'll just tie that out and uh, we are going to copy that and i'll go into the next line and paste it here again but we'll replace this with specular and uh, we'll also have of course a float called shininess so let's go ahead in here and have a float uh, called shininess and this is pretty much uh, identical to what we have got inside of our GLSL shader here so yeah we have got our struct material which is uh, pretty awesome I guess so now you can see that uh, uh, we can uh, we have got this and in order to set the actual properties we'll say material dot diffuse and material dot specular and material dot shininess and we'll set them pretty similar to how we set uh, set the uh, you know stuff here using floats and uh, values with vector trees and floats respectively so we'll go in here and uh, when we are drawing an object we won't require a color instead what we'll require is we'll require a material so we'll have to change this here so we wa we'll go ahead and uh, say for example we'll say just a const material and we'll take this as a reference just to s save memory because uh, taking stuff as a reference is generally much more performant than passing a copy so we'll go ahead and uh, do it like that const material and we'll which we'll just call uh, material for example and we'll set that to its default value so just so that we don't really need to pass a material if you don't want to and uh, yes we have got our draw function uh, now it will say that its uh, function definition was not found we can just uh, press alt enter and uh, uh, create the definition here and what we'll do is we'll open this up and of course it's got the other definition that it says was wrong so what you'll need to do is we'll just cut all of this and uh, paste it here and we'll remove this definition now the problem is that uh, setting the value of the shader like this won't work because don't we don't have a single mm, uh, color but instead we have a whole material so how are we going to set that 
now it's pretty simple to do what we are going to do is we are going to remove that color line and then we are going to shader dot set value and we are going to set material dot diffuse to material dot diffuse so yeah it's basically identical we'll set specular to specular and shininess to shininess and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much all we need to do it's going to automatically get the correct overload of the function and uh, in the main file what we need to do is we need to create for example a const material here which we'll call material and we'll just initialize it by passing the diffuse and the specular and also the shininess uh, I'll set the diffuse and uh, to be uh, you know the previous color the specular will be white because for most plastic like materials non metals uh, the specular shininess is always white while for metals it is uh, equal to a diffuse color generally so we'll do it this way and for example we'll uh, set the shininess you could set that to 2 if you really want it to be uh, like uh, the shininess to be scattered around and distributed and uh, like that and if you want it to be concentrated at a single place you need to set it to a higher value anyways I'll say object dot draw and uh, we'll pass in the material here and uh, let's set it at 2 to see what happens so what you should see is that our highlights are a lot larger and uh, yeah it's basically like that so let's see what you can see is that uh, yes we do get our highlights they are a lot larger and uh, well our materials are still working and we are getting our material system working but still the problem is that there are is still like uh, a single material for all objects so we'll need to learn how to store a different material for different objects but uh, uh, these all are like stored in a single object so we will need to have this material be on a per model basis instead of a per object basis like a per mesh basis so we will do that in the next video make sure to stay tuned for that and share this video with other people as well and uh, I'll see you in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and bye